if you've been watching cable news recently, you might recognize a familiar pattern. We need to understand that there is only one thing that Putin understands, and that's force. Uh, I'm not saying sanctions aren't important. I think sanctions, uh, you know, have their impact. But make no mistake about it. What Putin pays attention to is force. The United States needs to provide the weapons and our allies need to provide the weapons necessary to make that happen. And I think this may be an opportunity for the United States and the West to actually deliver a very fatal blow to Russia's ambitions on the global stage. I think, How? Swa- I think swallowing Ukraine, a country the size of Texas with 40 million people, is unprecedented since World War II. And if the United States can train and equip the Ukrainians and I think engage in a second Charlie Wilson's war, basically the mm-hmm. sequel to the movie and the book, which is arming and training a, a, a determined force that will shoot Russian aircraft out of the sky, open up those tanks like with can openers like the javelins and kill Russians, which is what our thing with, with our, our equipment's doing. I think it's a huge opportunity to hit Putin very hard. In NATO, where I was Supreme Allied Commander, you flood the zone in Eastern Europe. You bring in troops, tanks, missile systems, warships, all the above, in order to send a signal to Vladimir Putin at a minimum, you may be able to. And that's only a brief preview of NBC and CNN's long parade of ex-military officials turned defense consultants invited on to endorse various degrees of intervention in the war in Ukraine. New reporting from Andrew Perez in The Lever reveals how the networks have consistently failed to disclose the day jobs of their hawkish talking heads, leaving viewers in the dark about the analyst's potential to personally profit from increased or prolonged conflict in Europe. Yeah, for example, that former CIA director, Leon Panetta, that we saw, also former chief of staff for the Pentagon and the CIA, Jeremy Bash, and former NATO Supreme Allied Commander, James uh, Stavridis. <laughs> we just practiced this name, and now I can't even say it. James, St- uh, James St- Stavridis. Stavridis or something, um, are all employed at Beacon Global Strategies, which is a defense industry consulting firm that has reportedly represented weapon, that weapons manufacturer Raytheon. So, Andrew, welcome to the show, senior editor at The Lever. How could these, I, I mean, obviously this is a problem. You've got these guys on there. They're all saying war, 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 kill Russians. I mean, one of them actually said that. Um, how could these networks, in your view, better represent to the public that these guys have financial interests in killing Russians and war? Sure. Um, I mean, I think they could probably start with identifying the firms that they work with. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think a a kind of broader issue here is a lot of these, uh, you know, ex-military officials, when they go on into the private sector and they start these consulting firms, they never disclose their clients at all. Um, You know, Beacon Global Strategies has been in operation, I think, since like 2015, around then. And, you know, we only know just like a very small sampling of their clients from what's been reported over the years. They've they've never disclosed. And yeah, I mean, you know, Jeremy Bash has been um, on NBC like uh, as a national security analyst now for at least five years. Um, So it's you know, it's definitely a, a, a broader issue within this sector, just that there is a lack of disclosure. And, you know, if you don't technically lobby if you don't meet the requirements for a lot uh, for a lobbyist on the federal level you just don't really have to disclose this stuff at all right but andrew a fundamental tenet of journalism is disclosing those kinds of conflicts of interest if i were to write an article uh you know advocating for a position that or a non-opinion piece you would have to put it that you know brianna gray former bernie sanders and national press secretary maybe have an investment in one outcome or another the idea that these people go on tv or the practice seems to be different and go on these channels that have the imprimatur of liberalism because they're CNN or MSNBC seems to really be providing another level of cover that the public is largely unaware of. Yeah, yeah. Though, I, you know, I will say this is an issue in the op-ed industry. Mm-hmm. It, it definitely is. Um, there's an issue in the think tank industry, too. We didn't even really cover it. But, you know, so many of these think tank officials who are going on TV now, too, are are also, you know, working for institutions that are funded by the defense industry. It, it's definitely a broad issue within the within the media industry and in, in, in D.C. in particular. And look, I agree with you completely. But here's my question. Would it actually at the end of the day 
matter to anyone if these things did get these things should be disclosed because it's the right thing to do but the appetite among the mainstream media for hawkish commentary and it like it's it it seems to be I, I don't think I can just chalk it up to sort of financial interests that we're not all privy to or not you know aware enough about there's something ideological about it or there's some genuine belief behind it because it, it like it has to be because of, for how frequently it shows up so I don't know if like w would this would, would this help even and I, 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 that sounds depressing but do you know what I'm getting at. <laughs> I mean, I, I do think I understand what you're saying. You know, I, the, the media like in this Ukraine conflict has been definitely pushing for a lot of, um, you know, tactics that would that could definitely escalate tensions between the U.S. and Russia. Um, and it's it, and, you know, so these generals like they're kind of just filling <laughs> filling the void here almost. Right. Like it's the, the journalists are pushing, um, you know, some some pretty uh, potentially. Um, problematic tactics. You know, you've, you've talked, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, why hasn't the U.S., you know, helped set up a no-fly zone? Or why isn't the U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. providing, you know, these planes to to Russia or allowing them to take off from, from U.S. NATO air bases, uh, sorry, to Ukraine, um, uh, and allowing these planes to take off from, from, from US, a U.S. air base in Germany? Um, you know, that was, that was a hot topic on, on TV. And then they bring in, you know, the generals to discuss. It's, that's mm -hmm. often how this goes. So yeah, it, you know the, these people are just filling the airtime to an extent, but yeah, they 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 do have you know some self interest here, and I do I do think that the the public should know about it. Yeah, I mean I I mean I understand maybe your point, Robbie, that well I don't know if the public will even care, right? So rather than having on the you know on the Chiron like the CIA director, you know former CIA director, or former NATO Supreme mm -hmm. Allied Commander, you know instead if it said. Um, current defense consultant, mm -hmm. you know, defense industry consultant, right. would people, would it actually resonate with people? Would it matter to them? But, you know, whether it does or it doesn't, we should at least know about it, right? I mean, that yeah. seems it, to it be... Probably... Yeah, it would change the, the discussion a little bit. It would definitely change the terms if, if yes, the, the Chiron moved to say, you know, defense consultant after former general. It would definitely change uh, perception probably a bit. Yeah, even better if they had a journalist interviewing the right. person right. who was change. willing. Yeah, if the host yeah, said, really. and by the way, you know, what are your incentives here? But obviously the host wouldn't do that in the in these <laughs> Well, especially contexts. because there was this alignment of interest right. in so many times and and between the advertisers and the show. So one of the, the, the observations that has really landed hard with me and I think about all the time is, you know, why do these military contractors advertise on these news channels? It's not like your aunt flipping through the channels is going to like invest in a, in a war plane or something like that. No, they're really <laughs> reason is right. because they create this tension between, you know, what people feel they're able to say online and what comes out in the news because you can't go against the advertisers that are basically fun, funding the channel. And that yeah. kind of thing is incredibly dispiriting and corrosive. Yeah. You know, it's almost like if you can't have, uh, you, you know, like, uh, what, like violent speech on places like Twitter, Right. Mm. Maybe they should maybe they should make it to where you can't have things like violent speech on the, you know, I mean, like with with running advertisements on the news or having these people, you know, having them spend money to be in these news programs. Like, I don't know if, if they're going to say, look, you can't have, you know, advocate for an uprising or advocate for violence. Social media, maybe you can't in the news either. Wouldn't that change things? Well, who's the who's the they there, though? What, yeah, what, what, I mean, if it's, that was it's a not channel? realistic. Well, killing, saying you want to kill Russians is the kind of speech that is actually allowed on Twitter despite prohibitions about... It's not on Facebook. I don't know if it's allowed on Twitter. <laughs> it, it certainly is happening a lot, and I'm not seeing a lot of yeah. censorship the way I do in other contexts, but um, I appreciate you joining us for this discussion and flagging this ongoing frustration for us, Andrew. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll have more rising after this.